Unleash the power of madness and frenzied flame in this upgraded build with new madness items from Elden Ring DLC. I'm talking about greater power from stack buffs and even more playstyle versatility, giving you so many options to engage enemies. In this video, I'm going to try all of the new madness items from weapons, talisman and incantations and will give you my personal opinion which ones are great for PvE and which ones are not. Also, I will show you how this build works, the weapons, armor, talisman, all the good stuff and how to include the new items in your playstyle so you can rule with the insane madness power in the DLC. Let's go, game on. This is madness. In the base game and the DLC PvE, there are still very few enemies that Madden's status effect can be applied to, other than yourself, of course. But this build, like the one I made a few months back, still does great damage with the weapons and the frenzied flame incantations. The core gameplay of this build is still the same. You want to fill out your own madness meter when possible to do even more damage than before with the help of the armor and talisman. You probably say talisman with madness? I will cover that in just a minute. The main combat playstyle will be dual wielding for most of the time, but it will change depending on the situation you're in. For example, when dealing with swarms or big enemies other than the normal weapon combat, you can use the weapon Ash of War or one of the new DLC weapons that is very quick, covers great deal of close up area with Frenzy Flame. I consider this to be like a two build in one for the power that this new weapon has. The incantations of this build are wonderful with great damage and versatility that allows you to do huge damage from up close or even kill from long range while filling up your madness meter. And to increase even more the damage with incantations, you may want to wield two Frenzy Flame Seals. So before any combat or in mid-combat, be prepared to switch weapons so you can do the best damage possible. This gives the build more versatility than before, not to mention the fun factor, avoiding the repetitiveness of weapon combat. Like I mentioned before, the most important weapon of this mainly dual wielding build is the Vikes War Spear that does great physical and fire damage, madness buildup, and scales B with dexterity and C with faith. It has a very mixed attack moveset when dual wielding with great reach and great damage, especially the jump attack and the running attack that can hit multiple times. But what still makes this weapon the number one favorite among madness fans in PvE is the Ash of War called Frenzy Flame Thrust that imbues the spear with frenzied flame and does an amazing frontal leap attack with a big explosion covering a good area around you with fire. So you can damage in three different ways, dealing damage with the spear hit, the damage from the explosion and damage from the ground fire. Also doing stance damage and inflicting madness in the process to you and the enemy. I think it's very powerful, right? I wanted to incorporate or even swap the Vikes War Spear for a new DLC madness weapon. Let's check all of the new items and let's see if it works in this build or not. Starting with Anaya's Torch, that its power will reside on the Ash of War called Feeble Lord's Frenzy Flame that shoots random mid-range bolt of flames around you, but it's too damn random even when you're locked on an enemy. So it makes it pretty unpredictable for me and it's an FP drain that I definitely didn't like to use. Next is the Madden Hand that combat-wise I don't like it because of the close-up range, but the Ash of War Madding Spear Hand Strike is great to inflict madness to enemies in one or two hits in PvP, but that's not the case in PvE. So it really makes this weapon kind of useless, but oh yeah, 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 big butt central. There's a big butt that made me reconsider that when you inflict madness to yourself, it increases damage by 7.5% for 30 seconds. And it's a great offhand weapon to have equipped while getting madness to get that buff. And you will keep that buff even if you swap this weapon for your main weapon, which is really sweet. I don't know if this was intended or is a bug, but use it while it's available. And the last weapon is the Frenzy Flame Perfume Bottle, which is a pretty decent weapon with quick attacks, close to mid-range and high damage and awesome area coverage when dual wielding. I think the only con is that it scales very low with all the attributes, getting up to a C with dexterity and max level. But take this weapon and pair with the Rolling Spark as a war that shoots a trail of perfume powder, creating consecutive explosions that deal great damage. So it can be a combo opener or another option for big enemies if you manage to hit the majority of the explosions. 
This weapon on itself can be on a separate build, but I decided to incorporate this when I wanted to deal with swarms or big slow enemies, taking advantage of those excessive amounts of explosions of the dual wheel attacks and the rolling sparks as a war. You can find this perfume bottle in abyssal woods on a dead body located at the northern part of the abandoned church. So the next new item is the H1 Exaltation Talisman that increases attack power by 20% for 30 seconds when madness is triggered in the vicinity. It stacks with the Black Dumpling Helmet and the Matting Hand for a combined almost like 42% increased attack power for 30 seconds if madness is triggered nearby while all three are equipped. This is a huge increase in attack power, so I recommend this talisman to be used. And the last new item is the Midras Flame of Frenzy incantation that being a reward from the boss of Midras Mans in Abyssal Woods called Midra, Lore of Frenzy Flame. Yeah, everything is Midra. I thought it was going to be great, but it's like Nanaya's Torch. Launching bolts are around you that can work for bigger bosses that are not immune to fire, but not to everything. But the main purpose that I found for this incantation was the ability to raise my madness meter completely super quick in return of a FP flask to proc that attack increase of stack black dumpling, matting hand, and H1 exaltation talisman, which results in huge increase of the attack power. I know some people don't like buff sequences, but this one is pretty good and necessary for this build to feel overpowered. So to summarize, I kept the Frenzy Flame Perfume Bottle, the Matting Hand, and Midras Flame of Frenzy Incantation. The armor that I'm rocking in this build is the majority of the Rakshasa armor set, except the helmet. So I got the armor, gauntlets, and greaves. This set is a new DLC armor that is pretty good looking and has a small buff that will boost all damage by 2% for every piece you are wearing. Pretty sweet. And in this build, I'm wearing three pieces, so it will be a 6% damage increase. It can be found when defeating the boss Rakshasa in the Eastern Nameless Mausoleum in the depth area of Skaru Altus. The helmet that I'm using is the Black Dumpling that let's say is like the White Mask for bleed builds. This helmet will boost all damage by 10% for 60 seconds when you get inflicted by madness. This complete armor setup has a 53 poise, so I didn't have to do any substitutions to get to that magic number of 51. The talismans I'm running in this Madness build are the H1 Exaltation, and this new DLC Madness Talisman will increase attack power by 20% in PvE for 30 seconds when Madness happens in the vicinity. If you like Madness build, this is a must because of the damage increase and can stack with the Black Dumpling Helmet and the Matting Hand. It can be found in the Abyssal Woods when you kill the aging, untouchable enemies that have a like a big yellow head and you have to be like stealthy around them. They can be killed after parrying their grab attack, which makes them vulnerable. This is the location on the map where I got mine, just west of the abandoned church. Next is the Shard of Alexander that will boost the attack power of the Frenzy Flame Thrust skill by 15%. Next is the Fire Scorpion Charm that will increase fire damage by 12% but increases physical damage taken by 10%. And last is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that will reduce by 20% physical damage taken. This talisman has become like a staple in all my DLC builds because it helps with the amount of damage you receive when you start a DLC and you are low in Scattered Tree Blessings. But if you are comfortable without it, I will suggest changing it for the Phlox Canvas Talisman to increase the potency of Madness Incantations. For the Physique Flask, I'm running with Flame Shrine Crack Tier, which will increase the Fire Attack damage by 20% for 3 minutes and stacks with the Fire Scorpion Charm. Next is the Cerulean Hidden Tier to avoid spending 1 FP Flask when doing the buff sequence. Remember that this build is versatile and if you want to rely more on incantations using double seals or want to support your spear uh, or perfume bottle combat, the buffed incantations that I'm using are Golden Bow to increase all damage by 15% and all damage negation by 10% for 80 seconds, Flame Granny Strength to increase the physical damage and fire damage by 20% and it lasts 30 seconds. Now for the offensive incantations, we've got Midras Flame of Frenzy, like I mentioned before, this new DLC incantation will only be used to quickly inflict madness on yourself 
to be able to proc the combined damage buff from Matting Hand, Black Dumpling Helmet, and the H1 Exaltation Talisman. Next is the Unendurable Frenzy that will make you emit violent bursts of flames of frenzy from your eyes continuously lasting until you ran out of FP or your madness meter fills up. It covers a great area and each projectile shoots like a, in a random fashion, but you can direct the burst with the free camera moving where the enemy is. This incantation does an additional attack when madness is not triggered when the spell ends, bursting projectiles in a 360 degree area around the player. This is the incantation I use with bosses and big enemies. Just get closer and pop that baby, hoping that you do the additional attack and also get madness to proc if you have not used Midrest Flame of Frenzy. Next is the Flame of Frenzy or the shotgun incantation that will generate a burst of Flame of Frenzy from your eyes in a frontal area that can help with swarms or even bosses, but frankly, I don't use it as much. And last is the sniper incantation that I like a lot called Frenzied Burst that will make you launch a blast of flame of frenzy from your eyes from a great distance and great damage to kill enemies from afar or chip away health from enemies that are walking slowly towards you. If you charge this incantation, it will even deal more damage. The buff sequence to increase your attack power by a huge amount should be like this, having matting hand equipped as offhand and one seal on the other hand. So you first pop your Physique Flask, then the next two buffs will be free. That's Golden Vow, next Flame Grand Me Strength, next Midras Flame of Frenzy to inflict madness on yourself. Now take an FP Flask and swap the Manning Hand for your main weapon to dual wield the Vite War Spear or dual seals, or keep the Manning Hand if you plan to use two hand perfume bottle. The main attributes of this build are Faith and Dexterity. All weapons scale the most with those attributes and if you go beyond 150 level, you can invest more points in them depending if you want to do more damage with the Vite War Spear, you go with Dexterity. Or if you want to do more incantation power, then you go with Faith. The class that I used was a Wretch, but you can use a Confessor or a Prophet if you want to start this build from scratch. This level 150 character has the following attributes. Vigor at 55 because the DLC enemies are tough and you need a good base health. Mine at 20, this will result in a decent amount of FP points to get madness on yourself with the Midras Flame of Frenzy. Endurance at 25 to get to a decent stamina pool and enough equip load to get to mid load. Strength at 16, just to meet the Vikes War Spear requirements. Dexterity at 44, this is one of your main stats because of the War Spear skills B with it and the Perfume Bottle skill C and helps a bit with your incantation custom. No points in Intelligence, Faith at 45. This is another main attribute that you need to have high to increase your incantation power. Note that you need to have a minimum of 41 Faith if you plan to use Midrash Flame of Frenzy and no points in Arcane. So like my first build that I made for Madness, it's a huge surprise and this build doesn't disappoint. With the new DLC items, it's a huge improvement in every way. Faster infliction of Madness to yourself, increased attack power when you get Madness because of the proc combination of the Matting Hand, the Black Dumpling Helmet and the H1 Exaltation Talisman. And the variety of weapons that can be helpful in all situations. Single, large enemies, swarms, big bosses, you name it. The only thing that is that you need to defeat a few bosses to get to the Abyssal Woods to obtain the Perfume Bottle and the H1 Exaltation Talisman and the new incantation Midras Flame of Frenzy to make this build shine. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this build like I did making it and playing it. Uh, so hit the like button to help the channel out and make YouTube share this video with more people and subscribe if you want to. It's not required, but I appreciate you either way. So take care, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!